Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the phrase syndrome or also called as auriculotemporal syndrome. Here this is associated with gustatory sweating. Injury of auriculotemporal nerve is seen due to, this is due to injury of auriculotemporal nerve which causes cross connection or apparent connection between the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers with the sympathetic fibers of the um, sweat glands. So you will see this aberrant cross connection is responsible for this phrase syndrome. So as a result here uh, the clinical features are on tasting or smelling food there is autonomic stimulation which causes sweating and erythema at the parotid gland region. This is mainly because the auriculotemporal nerve is injured. So that auriculotemporal nerve will now cross, cross connectivity with the sweat gland fibers. So because of that, see, normally if we taste food or smell food, there should be salivary secretions should be there. But because of this aberrant connection between secretomotor and sympathetic sweat, fiber, sweat gland fibers, so as a result, instead of salivation, there is sweating is seen. So that is phrase syndrome. So diagnosis is here we do minor starch iodine test is done uh, for diagnosis of phrase syndrome management then in the management uh, antiperspirants can be used and botox injections can also be used and we can also use tympanic neurectomy can also be used in non-responding cases one more important thing is minor starch iodine test is done for uh, detection of sweat production over the parotid region now the next the next topic is about parotid fistula. Parotid fistula is of two types. One we have internal parotid fistula where the opening of fistula is inside the mouth and it is asymptomatic. In external fistula the opening is outside the duct. So clinical features are we have uh, glandular fistula and also ductal fistula. If this is the gland, this is the glandular fistula and this is the ductal fistula. So, in glandular fistula, there is pinpoint opening is seen over the gland to the skin. In the ductal fistula, you will see the opening from the duct. So, if you see the risk factors, risk factors include rupture of parotid abscess, penetrating injury. If there is any incision and drainage of the parotid abscess, the tract will be left leading to parotid fistula formation. After superficial parotidectomy, any injury to the duct can lead to parotid fistula. Investigation includes we can do sialogram where you can find the tract of the parotid ducts. Treatment is Newman Seabrock operation. Newman Seabrock operation is done. Then pleomorphic adenoma. Pleomorphic adenoma is the most common salivary gland tumor which is seen. This pleomorphic adenoma is most common seen in parotid more than submandibular more than sublingual then also minor salivary glands so it is most common in parotid gland in the parotid glands also it is most commonly involves the superficial lobe or tail of the parotid gland this is most commonly seen in females and in the fourth decade and here there is mixed it is a mixed tumor where we have both the presence of uh, epithelial components and mesothelial mesenchymal components are seen in the parotid adenoma the location of the tumor is present in front and below and behind the ear lobule and it pushes it up so you will see slow presence of slow growth and this pleomorphic adenoma if this involves the deeper lobes then it will pushes the facial pillar and tonsils towards the midline uh, and even it pushes the uh, uvula is also pushed towards the opposite side so it becomes a dumbbell tumor investigation of choice is fnac treatment of choice is if it involves the superficial lobe then you do superficial parotidectomy in pleomorphic adenoma you will see the presence of the pseudopodia like extensions and as a result we should not enucleate it if we enucleate it then some of the tumor cells might be left because you are just removing like this so some parts may be left so as a result this enucleation is contraindicated in pleomorphic adenoma pleomorphic adenoma 
can also occur in sublingual and submandibular gland if it occurs in sublingual and submandibular gland we will have to do excision of the gland so if you see we have this is superficial parot uh, parotid uh, gland involvement which you see if the deep parotid lobe is involved see here in this picture if there is deep parotid lobe involvement then you will see that these these are the facial pillars and here you will have tonsils these are pushed towards the midline and even this uvula is also pushed towards the opposite side so these are seen in deep lobe involvement then then we will have to see the this is this is the superficial lobe involvement you will see the symptoms externally now complications if you see in complications first you will have to there is malignant change in the malignant change you have rapid growth there can be rapid growth or can pain paresthesias if there is facial weakness or enlarged salivary sorry enlarged cervical lymph nodes or if there is fixation of mastoid tip in all these cases you will always think of malignant change recurrence is also a complication then this is about the pleomorphic adenoma parotid fistula and frase uh syndrome so thank you for watching